Hi guys and welcome to my first digital painting tutorial process video in which I'll be showing you how I went from finding this gorgeous photograph by Sawyer W on Sketchy app and Instagram to then painting it inside of the Procreate app on the iPad Pro. If you choose to get started with Procreate and need some help, check out my master Procreate app course, link in the description. Now, without further ado, let's get started. So I began with a simple sketch, starting with lighter strokes and then strengthening them as I feel more confident about the lines that I'm putting down. And as you might have noticed, I chose a brownish reddish color to start as I love starting with any color rather than black. It, I find that it helps me keep the drawing face more loose. And I am not using any grids, lines or anything of the sort just eyeballing as I go and trying to put the big shapes down first. One of the biggest issues I see beginner artists face is that they focus on a little tiny part of the drawing, trying to make it perfect and add details, but then they kind of screw up the rest of the process because it's harder to go back and see the big picture afterwards. That's why I always start with the big, bold shapes first and then narrow it down as I go. As for the hair, I know it's so complicated for some people to get, but honestly, just try to find the big shapes as well and then narrow it down. As you can see, I started with a big shape of her hair, then created a bunch of smaller shapes and at the end of the painting, I'll be adding a few strands of hair here and there just to make it more realistic. The next step for this painting is laying down the colors. Sometimes I would start with the black and white rendering and then add colors on top. But I feel like sometimes it just takes away the liveliness of my paintings. So if you can and you know how to, go with colors right away. If you're still learning rendering, saturation, colors and so on, then maybe going with black and white is a great idea at first. One of the biggest tips I can give you is to lay all of the major colors down right away. I learned it from my painting professor at my uni and he would always say that all of the major colors need to be on the page before you proceed. And it all comes down to how one color will affect the other color. Here is an example of the same color squares. And if I added a background after finishing a painting, then the mood and the color relationships will change dramatically, depending on the colors that I chose. That's why you should always get the background down as quickly as possible. Plus, after you'll be using those background colors inside of your main figure, because colors get reflected and if you paint somebody on the inside or on the outside, that would be different colors inside of their skin and hair and clothing. The same as if you put somebody right beside a super green wall, you will see that reflection on them. So you have to be aware of the surroundings as well. For this particular painting, on the photograph, I can see a beautiful light coming right from the window. So for the background here, I used a big soft brush and just added some white to represent the light. And the background is created with some smudged painterly brushes and the rest of her is done pretty much with just one brush. As you can see, I constantly jump from place to place on this painting, trying to keep the level of details the same all around throughout the painting. And I still haven't touched the original sketch layer, but I'm of course working on different layers for other parts of the drawing. Usually I try to have at least four layers, one for the sketch, one for the background, one for the figure, and one for details. But more often than not, it gets past 10 or even 20 layers altogether. After I've laid out all of the basic colors of this painting, I can now begin to slowly get rid of the sketch layer. And for me, it's a mix of different things. Uh, sometimes I alpha lock the sketch layer and change the color of it. Um, I erase some unneeded parts and paint on top of other parts. It's an intuitive process of adding and subtracting. Um, I just try to make it feel right. 
The next part of my process is to focus on the most important part of the painting. And in this case, it's her face. So I play around with different color variations, making sure to add some red to her nose, lips and cheeks. If there were ears in this painting, in this photograph, I would also add some red in there. While also blocking in the shadows to make her face feel more three-dimensional. The reason why I focus on her face, or the most important part of the painting, is because you don't want to create a lot of details all around the painting. Um, I honestly believe you should focus on one part and make it as detailed and as beautiful and spend as much time on it as you want, but some parts of the painting should be um, less detail and just more color or texture. Um, it's a nice difference. I constantly rotate the canvas to make the movement of my hands and the strokes I make more confident and comfortable. At this stage, the painting looks like a big mess, but it will get better, I promise. So don't give up and just keep going. Even if you don't like where your painting is at right now, there is always the ugly stage of the painting, but it does get better as more you work on it. When I first started with this painting, I would use the smudge tool a lot to blend in the colors. But I only do it at the beginning, and I don't actually like using the smudge tool at this point. The reason is simple, I want my paintings to be interesting, sharp and believable. And using the smudge tool all the time often makes the figure look unrealistic, digital and even plastic. To avoid that, we use a mix of hard edges and soft edges throughout the painting. I usually leave adding highlights till the end, as it really does bring the liveliness to your art. But in this case, I thought it was appropriate to block them in right now, as there is this beautiful white light behind her. I'm also constantly using the quote-unquote creative license by changing up colors a bit, fixing her pose, and even by adding more highlights than the, in the actual reference. Um, if you think that something will make your art look better, just do it. And we are not photographers, we're not trying to make it as close to the reality as possible. We are here to create beautiful art, so just do your thing. As you can see, I also flip canvas a lot. It's a neat little trick that helps you notice mistakes you've made. You see, when you stare at something for a while, it starts looking right to you. So by flipping canvas, we are tricking our brain into perceiving this as a new image. And that's when we notice those little anatomical mistakes, they start standing out so we can fix them easier. I also use the liquify tool quite a lot mostly to move around some parts and exaggerate other parts. It's just a very nice little tool that is super helpful. A short side tip, eyes and teeth more often than not are not pure white color. They are affected by their surrounding. So if the lips are only a bit open, then their shadows and colors will affect the teeth. And the same goes for the eyeball. You see, it's under the eyelid, so there is a shadow coming from up top and it's round, <laughs> which means that the brightest highlight is only at one spot and then it diffuses. So that's one of the mistakes that I see so many beginner artists make is that they make eyes and teeth uh, super, super white, which is most often not the case. At some point in this process, I stopped liking the colors of her body. So I used the Levels Filter tool on um, that part of her body and made it more red and more saturated. I believe filters were originally created for editing photographs, but artists soon realized how helpful they are during a painting process. So I use a variety of filters throughout the process of creating this digital art and often at the end as well. I usually do it on a duplicate layer, however, so I can see if the difference I made was worth it, if it's too much and I should lower the opacity, or if it's no good at all, and then I will delete that layer without worrying about uh, affecting my actual work. 
For the hair, I used my hairbrush that I'm giving out for you guys for free. I'm giving out two of them. You can grab them on my blog, yardpath.com, and I will leave a link down below. Um, I use it at first, but then I blend the ends to make it more believable because if you just use it without any blending or you overuse it, it's not going to help you, it's going to harm you, so make sure to blend the ends in. At some point, I also figured that this painting needs more shadows, so I added them on a new layer, play around with layer modes to see what works best, and then lower the opacity for that layer. In the final stages of your painting process, you should ask yourself not only what else can I add, but what should I take away? Overloading your image isn't going to make it more effective necessarily. Your viewer's eyes need a place to focus on and look at all these incredible details, but they also need a place where they can rest. So having a balanced mix of both is exactly what we're going for. I then decided to add a new white soft layer on top of the work and blend it via screen mode. Because on the reference image we have some light completely covering the top of her head, so I'm sort of going for that look here as well. Then I tried to recreate the rainbow reflection we see on the image, but ended up not really using it as I thought it takes away the attention from the main subject too much. So I made it almost invisible but still kept it at the background for added interest. Adding some extreme highlights to her face at the final stages really allowed it to pop and capture interest. Sure, they don't exist in the reference, but that's the beauty of digital art. You are in control of the final result. Just don't overdo it. I also like making pupils not completely black, but then adding a line of pitch black around the highlight for maximum contrast. At the end, I duplicated all of the layers and combined them together into one because now I want to add some lens blur to the work. So I blurred the entire layer and then using the mask tool, masked out the parts that I want to keep sharp. Then I added a bit of noise to make the image look less digital, more realistic. Um, I just love the noise effect. Again, trying not to overdo it. And finally played around in color correction to see if I can make it pop more, if I can make the colors look more interesting. Then added some contrast and signed my name. And here is the result. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you like reading, also check out my blog yourartpath.com. Thank you for watching.